We've just landed at Black Sand Bay. At the start of the walk to Shackleton's Hut on Cape Roids. It's up that ice slope and off about a couple of kilometres. We're on the walk to Shackleton's Hut. Shackleton's Hut is a few hundred metres down below me on Cape Roids. The most amazing thing has happened after all this time. The fog and cloud has finally lifted from Mount Erebus. And I certainly hope you can see it behind me. Degraveling, <laughs> degraveling before going into the hut. You promise you're not going to kick whilst I'm doing it. Well, if ever you need a job, you can always get a job mucking out horse stables. Chris, what do you do, Dr. Rachel? She's on her knees doing her own. I will do my own. Do you know what I'm playing with your feet? <laughs> well, I there's no sense of adventure. There's, there's the end of foreplay here. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just not working. Yeah. Stand against that. Take a big, big deep breath. You won't, you won't feel a thing, especially through those gumboots. Yeah, that's right. I'm entering Shuckleton's Nimrod Hut on Cape Roids. Only eight people at a time are allowed in here. Now begins the walk back to the beach where we landed and then onto the Zodiac and back to the ship. It's getting quite late in the day now, although the sun doesn't set till after midnight. It does start to get very cold. The ship is uh, coming in to pick us up. It's too deep to anchor here, so the ship has been floating around all day waiting for us to come back. This is absolutely one of the highlights of any visit to Antarctica. Ross Island is the location of Mount Erebus of the famous plane crash which of course is also an active volcano but it wasn't active today no smoke unfortunately and of course the site of Serena Shackleton's Nimrod hut from the heroic days of Antarctic exploration in the early 1900s now if we're going to get all the way down here with her falling flat on my face, I'm going to have to put this away. Today we've landed at Robert Falcon Scott's Terra Nova hut at Cape Evans. This is the hut and base from which Scott set off to made it to the South Pole <coughs> and even died on the way back. 
<coughs> so it's very significant. The ship is anchored only just offshore today. It's very, very cold. And as we look around, the Transantarctic Mountains in the distance there. And there's the heart. <coughs> Forgive the <coughs> voice, I've got a shock of a cold. This is a very large hut compared with the uh, the one yesterday and uh, <coughs> very well built, complete with large stables which are in the foreground there that lower section of the building and the whole thing is set absolutely magnificently below the completely incomparable Mount Erebus Turning around to the bay that we're in, this is a very difficult landing because of the quantity of ice. I had to duck ice cliffs to get in and clamber around big icebergs. And as I'm about to show you, there was quite a lot of spray coming in on the way in on the boat. And it's so cold, whoops, it's so cold that the sea spray is hitting my clothing and my pack and turning instantly to ice. Well, I guess that has one advantage. Uh, things don't get specially wet because everything is instantly frozen. I'm in the process of climbing up to the Memorial Cross. The Memorial Cross to the three men who lost their lives for the Ross Sea Party. They're laying cairns across almost to the South Pole for Shackleton's polar crossing, which never went ahead because his ship was crushed in the ice, of course. Three men died in this process the leader, Macintosh. It's quite slippery. Okay. There's the ship, it's just off the beach we landed on. Uh, there's the hut. 